Hey, what's up, guys? Rounding out the, uh, the the November decadence. What is it? Symbolism. Well, that's the other term that they used for decadence. Uh, literature, poetry, and even the arts. Okay, and Tashin, right? They make the uh, nice intro books here. Uh, of course, they have much larger books for a lot more money. But uh, this was a pretty interesting one in terms of not just the sample of art. I mean, they go over, of course, you know, the people that were before, like the Pre-Raphaelites and guys like Goya. And they also show, like, how, you know, even into the 20th century, you had, uh, you know, symbolism. Uh, the whole idea of the decadence, right? The uh, the uh, kind of dreamlike imagery, I would argue, of course, what I always say, right? The pagan reflex. Uh, to, to understand that the 19th century is... All the stuff that is happening, the changes really happened in the 19th century. Even the last century before and now, a lot of this stuff is basically uh, moving on from the changes that were wrought in that time. Okay, uh, and you know, the, the, everything, the rational, uh, every, every science, progress, all these things I have mentioned before. Uh, the artists, these particular artists, whether, you know, of, the, of, of painting or of the written word, they sort of felt, they sort of knew that this was the beginning of the end and not the beginning of the beginning. Right. Anyway, the book is good in terms of the writer. I think it's a woman. Look, and there's a, there's a, uh, yeah, read on with the uh, Cyclops. Right? Nice sampling of the different art. Right? Some people I never heard of actually in this. Okay, a lot of the Germans I had never heard of. I think they call them something else. But you see that with this kind of art, mimicking the poetry, well, not mimicking, reflecting like the poetry and the literature at the time, whether in English or French or whatever. You see like, hey, you see the dark. Uh, you see the, the pagan, even though a lot of the imagery is of, you know, particularly like, you know, in the, the Bible. Uh, Salome is a big one, right? Uh, and I like, you get, like I keep saying, the pagan reflex of it, the darkness of it, okay? The the it's the reaction against the the market like you see in our bois they bring up our bois right by joris K. carl heisman is one of my favorite books the dandy guidebook per se he brings up in constantly in that book the commodification the americanization the market the bank uh you know civilization now the rule of money right and the middle class you know the, the term for that uh the despising of it uh, you, you see that reflected in this okay you, you, they realize that something has been lost, not gained. Okay, gained for who? Gained by what? Uh, anyway, let me start my own thing. But I like how they bring this up here. And you got the, you got the dandy. Oh, this this guy's a real jerk, from what I heard. But I can't imagine. Look at him. I always laugh when you see the hipsters today with the facial hair. So at least these guys, you know, these guys could fight and had like walking sticks and pistols and little things. But. You know, Focusing on the art, you can see that. You can see that there's a real supernatural element to all of it, right? Like Goya, right? The sleep of reason produces monsters. This is like me every night, man. <laughs> of course, Fossili, right? And of course, William Blake. Yeah, it's, it's a good setting up of things, okay? You know, they all be Beardsley. Uh, India on ink paper. Uh, but, oh, this guy. Hoismans didn't like this guy. He gets dissed a lot in... Uh, La Paz, which I wasn't able to cover this month, but um, I also too like they showed sculpt, uh, you know, sculpture. We forget about sculpture as an art. So I could go through this the whole time. I want to focus on this thing here, uh, pretty much reflecting here, uh, symbolism. Right? I like to use decadence. The lean towards the abnormal resulted not least from a consciousness that had set settled upon a part of European society since the second half of the nineteenth century. Namely, a sense of decadence and of fear, expressed euphemistically in the term fin de soleil, of belonging to a culture that was in the process of decline. Now, without reason, did the history paintings of the day experience an increase in images of the moral decay of ancient Rome, and thus the intended warning, the resulting fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Uh, this is cool. In 1886, the first issue of the periodical Le Decadent was published in the Paris. In the Paris, through. Readers were informed that religion, morality, and justice were in a state of degeneration. Attendant symptoms including not only the hypersensitivity of, ex hypersensitivity of exalted taste, infinitely refined luxuries and pleasures, but also neurosis, hysteria, hypnotism, morphinism, academic charlatanism, and Schopenhauerism. <laughs> uh, in England, too, you had all this thing. You had the whole thing with uh, 
Oscar Wilde and what went down with the decadence mania, which fed on its anti-bourgeois and anti-naturalistic mood of impending doom, like a hummingbird sucking nectar from an orchid, uh, inve- inevitably sailed into the aesthetic worlds of Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, uh, who certified that all great art was predicated, predicated, predicated upon the world of symbols, right? So you bring here, then of course you go back to Schopenhauer, right? The world is will of representation. The whole idea of something behind the veil, there's something behind the veil, something pernicious that makes a nightmare of our world. Right? I brought that up in the Ligati video. Uh, and also you have other things here too, right? The book of masks, Rami de Gaumont, right? The whole idea of masks. Now, not the obvious aside, the idea of a mask as a covering, the mask is the true face, right? Uh, hiding is what you see inside. You get all this symbolism, right? So, but the whole idea that these men were prophets that were that saw what was coming, uh, because they were closer to the the fall. Let's say you want to talk about the fall, right? They were closer to that when everyone thought that things were going to get better. You can argue technologically they did, okay? Before before the psychic, uh, you know, and physical slaughter of the next uh, you know decades to come here. Uh, Remember, those weren't the causes, those are the symptoms. And what you have today, frequently, is a confusing, and I'll say it again, a confusing of symptoms for causes, okay, which renders any kind of thing to try to conserve anything, which is ridiculous anyway, but uh, it doesn't work. They can't conserve anything because you can't, okay? You want to get a little supernatural, all this stuff that's happening then and now had to happen, has to happen. You don't stop decline, okay? You have, things have to go to their end and then something new comes out. So all these things are necessary, the things that we think are horrific. Uh, it sucks that we live in that time, okay? But that's what you are. You you live and exist in the time you do. Um, if there's immortal things, which I believe there are, okay, I'm not an atheist. Uh, what they are is always a mystery. Some people don't think it's a mystery. But it's reflected in this, okay? The pagan reflex, but also there's a lot of Christian imagery too, because the whole idea is not even, you know, in the end, Christian, pagan, whatever. Uh, it's all, do you believe in something beyond time and space? Okay? Or do you acknowledge that there could be something beyond time and space that you may not understand? Okay? Whatever the origins of the secular modernism is, you know my Nietzschean view or not, the bottom line is to believe there's nothing. Is to invite anything in. And essentially you've seen that. So enough of that pontificating. There's interesting things here. Look at that. That looks like a cool, like a black metal like art. And uh oh, hey, I don't remember the temptation of St. Anthony. I was trying to remember this scene in uh, that Flaubert uh, story. And uh ah, the the pre-Raphaelites, like Swinburne I had, who I had done the poetry of, was sort of more associated with that. This artist here, John Everett Millais, he drew one of my favorite paintings, but I'll get to that at some other point. Other notables here, Bachlin, right? The Isle of the Dead. They made a movie of this with this as a set, you know, as an inspiration. The Boris Karloff film, one of those RKO movies. You know, uh, Jan Torup, I remember this. Very Asian, uh, like Japanese influenced. And uh, other notable things here. You know, that's interesting. This guy here, James Ensor. This dude's. It drew a lot of a lot of his stuff dealt with masks, Belgian painter, right? Monstrous apparitions, right? Uh, his stuff is creepy, man. This guy, uh, you don't hear his name mentioned a lot, but he he does a lot of creepy things with the art, with uh, masks, right? And this is cool. I never heard of this guy, Mysteriarch, right? This uh, sculpture, right? This Bachman again, the head of Medusa, okay? All all things aside, remember the uh, Medusa, her head represented what? It represented wisdom. Right? And the snakes also in the ancient world or in, in the east. The snake was not this fearsome, tempting creature. It was a creature of wisdom. Interesting, huh? Don't want to go with that. Anyway, great book. Oof, man. man. Max Klinger. And um, this a good thing a lot of guys I never knew about, like this dude, he draws like these really creepy looking chicks here. And, uh,. Of course, he's also a pre-Raphaelite here, Rossetti. Uh, that was cool. That looks like a black metal 
album cover. And so, like I said, this is a real good passion book for the visual aspect of the fin de soleil and beyond the arts. Uh, and everything I mentioned, okay. Uh, hail to the prophet of decline. It's not supposed to make you sad. It's not supposed to make you black pilled. It's supposed to uh, actually steal you up a little bit. It's supposed to make you have a little laugh at things, a little evil laugh like I have. Because uh, essentially what we're doing is we're looking through the veil. We're doing that very European, Faustian, Neanderthal thing. Right? We're looking past the veil. We know there's something in between us and the greater reality, okay, where everyone else is just going along with it, okay, um, and we're seeing through that, we want to see what's beyond there, okay, uh, and that's sim that's uh, that sums it up for me, so, uh, November is almost gone, now, here comes, uh, here comes winter in December, <laughs> later.